What do you know? Yes, Backbone, man. Dungeon Family, first generation. And you're listening to Day One Radio, man. Yeah. The business. Welcome back, welcome back to another episode, another installment of Day One Radio right here on ablradio.com. That's Art Beats and Lyrics Radio to be exact. Make sure you download the very free, very accessible smartphone app for your iPhone and Android devices. And B, tell them where they can find the entire Day One Radio catalog at. Oh man, you can always find Day One Radio on dayoneradio.com, iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and any other place that you can find podcasts at. What's good with you, brother? How your week been going? Oh, it's, it's been going pretty fantastic, man. Pretty fantastic, that's, man. That's, that's saying a lot for you. You normally get downplay. You saying it's going pretty <laughs> fantastic. It must have been a damn good week, bro. Hey, man, I'm feeling good these days, man. I'm feeling good, man. I, I ain't mad at that at all, man. So everything been good, you know. Once again, come out. Hip Hop Trivia, we do it every week at uh, Piedmont, 75 Piedmont Northeast in Atlanta. We, you know, it's been it's been pre- doing pretty good, growing. It looked like we're gonna do a couple dope things at A3C coming up. So, man, y'all, y'all stay tuned, man. And happy belated birthday to you as well, man. Oh well, pre- well, actually, the birthday is is tomorrow after they hear this. But you know, we celebrated yesterday, so you know, and I'm also will be celebrating all weekend long. So it's it's gonna be good, man. You know, can't complain. Always blessed to live another year. That's always a positive. It's better than the alternative. Right. <laughs> That's for damn so. But yeah, man, you know, we, we bring you a lot of things on Day One Radio, and one of the things we're all about is black-owned business, financial literacy, and really holding it down for our community. So this brother that we got on as the first guest on today's show, we go back, like all three of us go back some years, man, and he's always been dibbing and dabbing in video and doing his things with editing, directing, producing, and everything. But I, you know, sometimes you you work a long time and then you you hit that one that just right. take off for you, man. So we have the producer and director of uh, the Black Friday film, the one and only Rick Mathis. What's up, bro? What up? What up? What up? Thanks for having me, man. For sure, for sure, most and, definitely. And I gotta get on Rick. You can tell Rick is a real filmmaker now. He has the shades. I on, think bro. there might be transition lenses. <laughs> I, I I was when I seen him last week. I was gonna say so. Are those transition lenses, Rick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. Know, baby. All right. For sure. I'm just making you know. Every time they don't always come back from the sunlight yeah. to when you're inside. Just yet. Yeah. Yeah. Give them about five minutes. They'll be yeah. they'll be gradient. Okay. <laughs> for Mom, sure, man. But oh, thanks. No, this everything, boy. Exactly. <laughs> Which, yeah, we all, the three of us, man, used to, to work together at an outlet years ago, and we all doing our things now. So, man, it's, it's a positive to see you doing your thing. So, man, what, oh, yeah. what made you want to do a film, or what initially sparked the idea of doing a film on, on just the black dollar and financial literacy? Well, I mean, this really all um, stemmed from a couple years ago just seeing our people getting slaughtered in the streets. You know, and it seems like nothing was being done about it. You know, you had evidence on the Trayvon Martin case where the operator told uh, Zimmerman to go back. He proceeded. You know, there was evidence of that. Nothing happened. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, killed, killed Trayvon in cold blood. And then you have several ones after that that happened. So, you know, I asked a question, like, what is it? You know, why is the black life not valued or respected? Mm-hmm. And the conclusion that I came to, until we organize and unify and understand the power that we have economically, we're never going to be valued in that sense. But not only that, until we value each other. You know what I'm saying? Right now, we don't really even value each other's life. So until we value each other's life, until we value the economic power that we have, then, you know, nobody else is going to value it. Nobody else is going to respect it. So I wanted to create a product or a project that, 
you know, that will inspire us to talk about money, that will give us a platform so that we can dialogue about money. Because, you know, that's just something that black folks don't talk about in the community. You know what I'm saying? We always talk about how much money we don't have, but we never talk about how it's an instrument and how it should be used, you know, to leave a legacy for your kids, kids, kids. You know what I'm saying? Instead of starting from ground zero like I did, you know, I know, I don't know about y'all, but I had to start from ground zero. Mom did her best. She did yeah. what her mom taught her, right. which was trade time for money. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? You continue to trade time for money, you'll run out of time before you get to the desired wealth that you want to obtain. Yeah, you're 100% right. What was the story that came out the other day that it, it's going to take at this current rate to close the gap, the economic yeah. gap between you know, white people? 200 and some years, they said. Yeah, something that's, crazy. I was like, What? I guess when you work for four hundred for free, then you yeah, know, it's no <laughs> doubt, and, and it's that's one yeah. of the things. And so you know, and that's the other piece to the puzzle. You know what I'm saying? Not to come down, you know, hard on on my people. I say this out of love, but you know, we've been through uh, uh, something that no other race on the planet has gone through. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We were stripped of our name, stripped of our culture. You know what I'm saying? Stripped of our flag, and said, "Now go out and compete." You know, after we had, you know, built America. And laid a solid foundation for America. Now go out and compete with nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So 200 some years really ain't bad because, like you say, we work 400 for free. 100%. You know? I, one thing I was impressed with, man, is that you got a lot of people from different walks of life mm-hmm. to discuss financial literacy. Some of them even discuss their own personal finances and the ideology that they've been taught mm-hmm. about money. Was that a challenge to get these people to open up, and, and how did you do it? Uh, I mean, you know, it's always a challenge. The challenge was, you know, getting these people to actually sit down in front of the camera. I know, you know, Maurice can attest to that, yeah. you know, <laughs> when we was doing the, uh, the show we was doing. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's the hard part, actually getting them to, getting your schedules to connect. You know what I'm saying? So that's really the hardest challenge. But, I mean, you know, once... I sat down with them and, you know, I came from the heart with the conversation and let them know, look, this is something that we really need to talk about. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not talking about this. And it's imperative that we talk about this because we're going from the industrial age to the technology age. Industrial age was all about manpower. Technology age is all about thought power. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not thinking, if you're not knowing how to patent those products, uh, have intellectual properties, have things that you can make money off of while you sleep, then you're missing the mark. So, um, so yeah, so that was, that was the hard part. So once, you know, I came from there, came from the heart and said, look, you know, tell me about this, tell me about that. And in the film, I only asked five questions throughout the whole film. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was those same five questions that started the conversation. The first being, if you die right now, would you leave bills or benefits? You know, that's a question that we all should ask ourselves. Yeah. And it's just a heat check question, just to let us know where we are in terms of the dollar. You know so what I'm saying? When you get with your money, you know, where are you? You leaving bills or you leaving benefits? Just that simple. Which is a, a very pertinent question because a lot of us don't have life insurance. Exactly. One. Exactly. And you got to have life insurance. I just did a new T-shirt that says, don't shoot, insure for one million. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So with that, and you can go get that shirt on the film BlackFriday.com, but with that shirt, if each one of us had a million-dollar life insurance policy, that would change the whole game because, number one, the police officers wouldn't be killing us at the rate we're being killed. Mm-hmm. We wouldn't be killing each other because the insurance company would be doing something about it because they would be paying out too much money. Yeah. But not only that, when you have... A, a whole life insurance policy or what's called a index universal life insurance policy, that policy also grows in face value, meaning that that's a living benefit as well as a death benefit. So that's the part that we didn't get because you can now take that cash value on that life insurance and now go start a business with 50000 if you need it, hmm. if you have that money in your insurance policy. Like I'm curious to know, like, you know, leading up to the making of the film, you know, mm-hmm. before you even cut on the camera for the first time, like, how much research did you have to do yourself personally? Because, you know, a lot of times the minute that you, you know, write a book or put out a film, mm-hmm. everybody's like, oh, you the expert, bro. You got all the answers. It's like, 
Well, I ain't got all the answers. Like, I, I've put together a cool little package here with some yeah. information in it, but I ain't, like, the expert, bro. So it's like, how much did you have to, like, in, inform and educate yourself yeah. before you jumped out there with this? Well, I mean, you know, it was more so me um, doing my homework on each person. You know what okay. I'm saying? Because, I mean, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. You know what I'm saying? Ever since I can remember. I've always cut grass, tried to sell something, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, to make a dollar. So I've always had that mindset. But uh, in terms of the people, it was more so, okay, who is the expert on this subject matter? Like your Dr. Claude Andersons, you know what I'm saying? Your Dr. George Frazier's, your, uh, your Jim Klingman's, you know what I'm saying? Your, your, your Hill Hoppers. So these people are the experts. So once I got them, then I interviewed other people to find out who were the other key experts. So it was like everywhere I was going, I was talking about this subject, talking about money. You know what I'm saying? I took all of 2015 to work on this project. So working on the project meant I slept it, I ate it, I drank it. That's what I did majority of 2015. I said, I ain't really doing no other projects but this. And then, you know, so in doing that, I'm at the gym. I'm interviewing people. I'm talking to people about, you know, fun, uh, uh, finances and, you know, what you what would you want to see in the film? What's what's a topic that you, you know, that's most talked about? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I did. So it was like shooting the project was like getting a doctoral degree because once I interviewed all of these people, mm-hmm. you know, and you and y'all know y'all, you know, journalists. So, you know, being a journalist, I'm a video journalist, but once you interview these people, that a lot of that information stays with you. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like how um, how Napoleon Hill went about writing Think and Grow Rich. You know what I'm saying? Like, he mm-hmm. wasn't a banker or anything like that, but he was going around interviewing the Henry Fords and the mm-hmm. Rockefellers and all these mm-hmm. type of people. Like, so it's like that information mm-hmm. is going to stick with you if you talk to the right people. Yeah, so once you interview those people and you ask those pertinent questions and they open up with you and you know what I'm saying, you have dialogue about, you know, uh, finance, money, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was a ton of stuff that that I learned that I didn't know. I didn't know that Abraham Lincoln started an organization called the Freedmen's Bureau, Mm -hmm. which was supposed to assist the slaves who, our ancestors who had just been freed, because I don't like to say slaves, but our ancestors who had just been free. Right. It's supposed to assist them with grants, loans, financial literacy. You know what I'm saying? But shortly after he started that, he was assassinated. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the Freedmen's Bureau became something totally different. Yeah, because I know like W.B. Du Bois talked about that in Souls of Black Folk. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it became something totally different. So with that, you know what I'm saying, we never had uh, – an organization or we never had a moment where we learned about finance. You know what I'm saying? Our ancestors were freed and they said, go out and compete now. Go out and share crop. But we know that was hustling backwards because, yeah. you know what I'm saying, you constantly stayed in debt. Exactly. But guess what? We still share crop because majority of us are still in, in debt. debt. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can never pay off the debt. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing just in a different form. 100%. 100%. Um, one thing I will say, and this is it's it's two different sides of the same coin. I would say over the last year, a lot of people were concentrating more on recycling our dollars within our community. So, what's your opinion on like the whole cash mob theory and supporting black mm-hmm. businesses and everything? Yeah, I definitely think you know we should support black owned businesses. Um, the thing that I really stress though is that as a black owned business, we provide a quality service. Okay. Yeah. Quality should be our bare minimum. Yeah. Like, we got to provide a service of excellence. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to be looked at under the microfine glass, on the microfine glass, a lot harder than other races and other people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By your so, own people. That yeah, by your own people. 100%. So that's the thing. So I say, let, you know, whatever it, it takes, provide a service of excellence. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about supporting the black owned business, but we got to produce more products right now. What do we own? We own the, uh, funeral homes. We own barbershops and salons and we own restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we own. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get more into the beauty salon business. That's a multi-billion dollar business. The supply. The most that's, definitely. That's a mo. but, but get this like, 
uh, Kia says in the film, you got a multi-billion dollar industry that is built off of us not loving ourselves. Yep. Because everything about that industry, for the most part, is changing who you are yep. naturally. Eurocentrically. <laughs> everything. So, you know, but that's something we got to work on. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. And it's it's interesting. My thought is always it's great to support each other's businesses, but how do we tap into providing the the goods that go into those businesses? How do we tap mm-hmm. into the textile thing? That's really where the, the real paper is at. Yeah, the raw material. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> you got to get because you still have to buy that material from somebody else exactly. who don't look like it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And what that comes from or what that boils down to is land ownership. Right. We're the most valuable product, the human being. Mm-hmm. But the next value, most valuable product is the land because everything comes from the land. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if we own land, then that's how we get those raw materials and produce those raw materials. Definitely. But we just don't own the land that we once owned back in the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? We left it to take jobs in industries and, and warehouses up north. But guess what? Now those jobs and those industries have moved overseas and everybody's coming back down south minus the land that they once had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you're doing a, a remix to the film. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, the remix um, is basically how you remix a song with remix in the film. So the remix will include uh, Les Brown, Rick Ross, Ice T. Which one? The real Rick Ross. Okay, right on. <laughs> Freeway Ricky, we're doing a show okay. with him. All we're right. doing a screening with him this uh, this Friday in, in North Carolina. So okay. if y'all listening in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Check us out. Go to uh, the Film Black Friday uh, fan page on Facebook or Instagram, and you'll see the flyer. But uh, we're doing a, a back-to-school uh, screening there, a red carpet event, as well as going around to a lot of the black-owned businesses in Fayetteville, you know, just to show love, to show support. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we're doing, kind of like the cash mob. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like Because it. that's what we have to start doing. I don't know if you guys saw the video that went viral where um, – the lady who's an Arthur uh, went to this beauty supply store in Snellville, Georgia. And she asked the lady, you know, he's like, man, this is one of the rare beauty supply stores that I know of, period. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and, and what she did, she paid the lady's rent for a month. But not only that, she had probably about 30 or 40 people standing That's outside ready to come in and shop. Brought That's the lady to tears, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we gotta start doing more, more, more of that. You know what I mean? Like, what are some of like you know, like the varying you know feedback that you've gotten from the film? Has it all been like, oh wow, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen? Has some of it been like, damn, bro, I ain't know we were doing that bad? Or has, <laughs> has some of it been, you know, damn, why you put us out there like that? Like, what has been some of the well, feedback? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's, it's been a mixture. I mean, you've had majority of the people saying, man, you know, this is a great film. Everybody needs to see it. Um, You've had everything from uh, how did you get all those people in the film? Uh, who you know um, who financed it? You know, so you had a whole lot of questions, man. Mm-hmm. There's been a whole lot of conversation about it. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But for the most part, I can't say it has been uh, good though and productive, man. That's mm-hmm. what's up. So when is the the remix? When are you gonna release the remix? November. We're doing it a couple of weeks before Black Friday. I think you know okay. right around election time. So all right, and let them know um, all the outlets that they can find the film and and all of that. Obviously, yeah, you can go you, to the film Friday dot com. But where mm-hmm. else can they? Yeah, grab you, it? you can find it at the film dot com if you're here in Atlanta, Madhu Bookstore in Greenbrier. Um, South Lake, uh, South Lake Mall. What's my man out there at the bookstore? Uh, I can't think of his name. But the he's Black right, Brook Store. Yeah, the Black Book Store in South Lake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but actually, he's right outside of the mall right now, right over by the uh, TJ Maxx. Okay. Um, you know, you can get him in, in uh, New York at the bookstore at um, Donnie McClurkin's uh, bookstore at his church. He's actually going to be in the remix as well. Okay. Um, 
Where else can you get it? Do you, you do you have any plans to put it on any of the streaming service like the Amazons or anything? Yeah, definitely be on right now it's on Vimeo. Okay. But um it'll definitely be on Amazon, YouTube. Okay. But right now I just wanted to try Vimeo. Okay. You know, and see how it's going. It's pretty cool. But uh definitely wanna put it on Amazon and um and what's the other one? YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Most definitely. Before mm-hmm. we go, man, I wanted you to give just based on, like you said, you've got a doctorate in this through, <laughs> through working on the film. What give us two tips that even the 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 average black man, black woman working a nine to five or just out there grinding can do to better their life financially. So two tips. The so one thing, which is what I've already said, life insurance. Yes. Majority of wealth is passed down via life insurance. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So what I would suggest is if you have a newborn, take out a policy on the newborn baby as much as you can, 500000 a million dollars. Some agents have been telling me that uh, they're making it harder now for you to take out a million dollar life insurance policy on a newborn. But take out that life insurance policy because, like I said before, The face value or the cash value, the living benefits, as well as the death benefits, you got to understand there's two streams. There's a living benefit and a death benefit. A lot of us only get what's called term policies, and that's just, for the most part, a death benefit. Okay. But if you take out a whole life insurance policy, that's a living benefit as well as a death benefit. So you can actually benefit from that life insurance policy uh, while you're living, it's like having your own credit union. Mm. But you can borrow the money tax-free to do whatever you want to with it. Tax-free. That's game right there. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I, I would say. And then, too, the next thing that I would say that's real practical is learn how to value your time. Get off social media. Turn that TV off. We all got 24 hours in a day. What you do with those 24 hours in a day determines how successful you're going to be or how unsuccessful you're going to be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So monitor how much time you're watching TV. Monitor how much time you're on social media. Monitor how much time you're at that job. You know what I'm saying? Commit to applying at least two to four hours a day to work on your craft, whatever you want to be successful mm-hmm. at. At least two to four hours a day. If you can't commit to that, then something wrong. Yeah. You said you'll go watch a movie for two hours. You know what I'm saying? You'll go watch sports for two to six hours, depending on, you know what I'm saying, yeah. if it's Sunday, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, or the playoffs. So, shoot, we have marathons. Right. So use that time, you know what I'm saying, wisely. We only got so many hours or so many seconds in our lifetime. Okay. When yeah. that second end, you're done. You know what I'm saying? You're right about that. 100%. So that's what I would say. Start to value your time more. You know what I'm saying? What you can pay people to do, pay people to do it. Value your time more. Because okay. you don't get no more time. You can get anything else in life but some more time. <laughs> You're right about that, man. We appreciate you hey, coming thanks for through, having brother. Me. Thanks for having for sure. me, man. Make sure y'all go pick up that film, rent it, buy it, whatever you want to do with it. Just make sure you watch it and get some game. This brother dropped a lot of jewels. So where can they follow you, man, to see what you're talking about on a daily basis? Everything is the film Black Friday. Okay. So... The social media, Instagram, the film Black Friday. The fan page on Facebook, the film Black Friday. The website is the film Black Friday. The email address, the film Black Friday at Gmail. All right. So 100%. everything is the film Black Friday. That's what we talk about. Keep it simple. For sure, for <laughs> sure. We're about to go into a quick break, and we'll be back. You're listening to Day One Radio on ABLRadio.com. No doubt. Yo, 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 what's happening? This is DJ Wally Sparks, representing Chad Town, Tennessee 423. What's happening? You tune in to Day One Radio on ABLRadio.com. Peace. Three, two. And we are back, man. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed the first segment with Rick Mathis from the film Black Friday. Make sure y'all go out and uh, pick that up, watch it. It's a lot of game, a lot of gems in that thing. And we are back. In here, man, I love having brothers from this particular set come in here because they always spit knowledge. They always got a good grasp of music, past, present, and future. So we have Dungeon Family, first generation, one of the generals of the thing, the one and only Backbone. What do you know? <laughs> What's going on, brother? 
I'm just easing through, man. I appreciate the platform and the info, man. For sure. Man, we man. always got to give it up for artists who show up not on time, but before time. I yeah. love that. <laughs> Punctuality is key. 100%. Yeah. I love it. Man, can we, let's let's take it back, man, because I feel like a lot of people know your music, but outside of certain, you know, segments, a lot of people don't know your story. So, you were one of the, one of the few, I would say, Atlanta for real. Yes, sir. 100% Atlanta for real. Yes, sir. So and, Atlanta that Kasim Reed was my lawyer on my first album. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? That was yeah, my lawyer. That, I'm that. so Atlanta. For those you know that don't know, Kasim <laughs> Reed is currently the mayor of Atlanta, so that's pretty damn the Atlanta. Two-term mayor. You yeah, know what I'm two-term about? mayor. He was my manager. I mean, I'm sorry, my lawyer. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, man, we'll take it back, man. When I, I was listening to a lot of stuff and reading a lot of stuff in preparation for this, and I didn't, I knew that a lot of you guys um, from the DF knew each other, but I didn't realize how far back you and CeeLo and you and Cujo go, oh, like yeah. back to pre-music. Right, right, definitely, man. I, um, Me and CeeLo used to see each other in the infamous Greenbrier Mall. He was eight years old. I was a few years older than him, but I'm just saying – the fact that we used to interact at Greenbrier Mall at that time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We had no idea that we would one day grow up to create some of the most profound music in hip hop. It was just an essence. We were just, you know, two young cats. You know, Greenbrier was the place to be. It was. That was our hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That was our hip hop moment. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, definitely. So, hey, oh yeah, and Cool Joe. We met in high school. We had a mutual attraction for one of the same young ladies. You know what I'm saying? And she used to just write his name on notebook paper. I went to Thera High. He went to Mays High. You know, yeah. Yeah. every day writing his name on paper. I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who is this guy? Right. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're from Atlanta, you can speak, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? But now nah, I'm this here though. Like I was like, who is this guy? So I had to meet him. He ended up being cool, Joe Goody. You know what I'm saying? And that's who took me to the dungeon originally in 1990. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was that interaction like at first? Because you know, for for those of that know that don't know, Mays and Thorough are two completely different high school institutions. Yes, you know what I'm saying? They that are. are known for breeding two completely different types of individuals. You at know that I'm time, <laughs> at that time, all of them chemical babies now. Though, you know <laughs> wow. What I'm okay, <laughs> we'll get into that a little later on in the interview. But yeah, man. But yeah, at that time though, you know, there, you know, we was a little gritty. But see, what people didn't understand is. Even though Mays High had the most beautiful light-skinned women you ever wanted to see, mm -hmm. Thera had the most beautiful dog-skinned girls. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the contrast. You see what I'm saying? At the same time, Thera was known for thumping. So everybody outside, you know, APS was like, yo, May, that them pretty boys. So brothers like Cujo and his little brother, you know what I'm saying, little, 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 little Bay Rack, R.I.P., them boy, you just scrap. Witch Doctor, you know what I'm saying? All them boy, you just scrap. T Mo Goody, you know what I'm saying? Them boys were scrappers. And Mays had that name, you know what I'm saying? And they made it what it was. They made it a necessity. So me being an inter you know, in a you know, universal figure, I just started migrating with them boys. Like people from my set didn't understand why you hanging with them. It wasn't me. It was a universal calling that I go dwell with these boys, you know what I'm saying? Right. And it's crazy because I've heard you say things along those lines a lot of times. Did you realize that things were moving in that direction back then, or was it just whatever you was doing? When the te when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know. You know what I'm saying? I had no idea that five dudes, four tray. You know, I knew it equals seven, but at that time I had no idea that seven equals spiritual completeness. I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Like all the things in my life lined up to be you know what I'm saying? I lived a rough one, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's why people look at me on social media and be like, wow, you talking to me? I'm like, yeah, I'm human. Mm -hmm. We're in the same dispensation of time. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I say hello? I'm just back, boy. You might see me at five point. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wild to doing what I do, you know what I'm saying? Like, I shake your hand like I'm amongst the people. I'm no greater or less than anybody. So, you know, I never knew that it was going to happen because I always kept that human aspect about being human. 
You know what I'm saying? So you said Cujo, like, is the, f- the person that brought you to the dungeon. Like, yes, sir. Like, t- 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 tell us why. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, from, from most accounts, you know, the dungeon wasn't a place where it's like everybody just got to go. You know what I'm saying? There was people that still never went, but they know right. everything about it. You know, so it's like, like, like why did you uh, get taken over there, man? You see, at the, at the, um, the essence of it, it wasn't even called the dungeon. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was just a bunch of MCs that migrated to a spot. The first place I actually went, if you guys seen the documentary, was over there at uh, Jelly Beans. Right. That studio there. That was the first place I interacted with the DF. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't even called, you know, Dungeon Family. The entire conglomerate was called the Goody Mob. Even Outcast fell under the umbrella of Goody Mob. Mm-hmm. Like, Goody Mart was the whole essence of everybody. The first time Dungeon Family was ever spoken on record is when Witch Doctor said it on holiday. The Dungeon Family. Yes, sir. Yeah. That was the first time it was ever spoke. Hmm. Spoken, I should say. Sorry, Miss Lay. <laughs> English class, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the first time it was ever spoken. The first time it was written, however, Big Boy wrote it. And the ATLians, thank yous. I like to thank Blase Blase and my dungeon family. Witch doctor told me that he read that and said that. I'm getting you pure dungeon facts now. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting you real facts now. Yeah, and we want to go deeper in the dungeon. I was uh, there we, from the we, we gonna go <laughs> deep. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ain't got to worry about that. Yes, we gonna sir. go deep. Man, so I, I, me and Reese was talking earlier, man, and, mm-hmm. and, and it seems like every like even your guest appearances whether it was on purpose or as you said before the universe bringing things together your guest appearances just kind of led up like the, it's damn near a story right you know what i mean from the first time you was on the the what was it, the slump you mm-hmm. know what i mean and then on still standing to when we heard you on your own with five dudes for trey mm-hmm. was that something that you were cognizant of or did it, that's just how it played out well, I mean, I'm an artist first, so I always set my music up. Okay. That's why I said life like shaking the dice, but I bucked back twice like five dudes, four tray. I knew Outkast was already selling platinums. So to say my song on their platinum platform, yeah, I would catch a few rug creepers. You know what I'm saying? I would <laughs> catch a few people. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like as soon as it hit, it hit the charts. We were on tour. It hit the charts, and it said Outcast, yeah. Five Deuce, Four Tree, because I was on tour performing it. Mm-hmm. Right. It hit Billboard, and it was listed as That's Outcast. Outcast. Yeah, I wish I could find that. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it hit the bill, and it wasn't even released. I didn't even have a deal. I was just doing it on the strength of going on the road with Outcast. You know what I'm saying? Doing We Love the O's and um, Slump. You know what I mean? You know, and, I, and I'm glad you you just mentioned that, man, because in my mind, like you just reminded me of something. Like I thought the first time I heard you was on Slump, but it was actually on I Refuse Limitations. Yes, on Still Standing. Well, well, well the first record I actually rapped on in the DF was the Society of Soul <laughs> album, which was Right Tonight. But I didn't go by the name Backbone at that time. I was called Stampede. Okay. And my homeboy Oddball of the Attic Crew was called Tumbleweed, and the name of our group was kicking up dust. Now, is it true that this oddball dude is the person that created the East Side Stomp Dance? So, mm. Somebody told me that. Before. And he affiliated with the Attic Crew. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I do know he has that first classic verse on Dope Boy Fresh. That's him. Ah, yeah. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That's oddball. You know what I'm saying? That first verse, that's him. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, we were known. That was the first album I was on. And then after that, we can't just gloss over how hard that name is, though. <laughs> the, stampede. The stampede and, and tumbleweed, tumbleweed <laughs> and the name of the group is kicking, kicking up, up dust. dust. We yeah, can't just hip-hop. gloss over that, though. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a hard body name hey, right there. I'm telling you, bro, that was hip hop. Like, you know, Atlanta was hip hop. That was our offering, you know what I'm saying? Like, we had to be different. We had to be who we were. Yeah. And then, you know, we was introduced to Shouter Put. I'm, I know y'all might be familiar with him a For little sure. bit. You know what I'm saying? But we were introduced to Shouter Put, and we wanted to be the first three-man group out of Atlanta. Mm. You know what I'm saying? On the new wave. You know what I'm saying? We had success in effect and all right. that. But what I'm saying is, in this new wave, we wanted to be a three-man hip-hop group. But that didn't work out. We changed the name 
when the Attic Crew was conceived. Oddball was like, yo, man, you getting all the features. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm staying down, man. I got to work, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be shy on the microphone. He was like, man, I feel like an Oddball over here. Mm. He changed his name to Oddball. You see what I'm saying? I was like, he was like, man, I don't know what my name going to be. I was like, shh. He was like, bro, you the backbone of this thing over here. I said, that's it. Hmm. Backbone and oddball. So then we formed the group Slick Partner. Slick Partner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kicking up dust is Slick Partner. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's where that came from. You know what I'm saying? And then we threw Shouter Put in the mix. It was Front Street Shouter, which is me. Back Street Shouter, which is um, Shouter Put. I mean, I'm sorry, Oddball and Side Street Shouter, which is Shouter Put. But we still going to do that um, Slick Partner album because it, it, it got to be done. Yeah. Even if it ain't the six songs, you know what I'm saying? We people gotta get that people remember the name. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. you can't even, that's always, the people are going to always remember that because people still play those records. Right, right. All right. the time. You know what I mean? So, right. I mean, let's let's get into the to the to the the album, man. The okay. Concrete Law, yes. which you know is most definitely the first which you would consider a trap album I'm out of Dungeon you know. Family, you know. but might be the first trap Ooh. album. Period. Well, I, I, I gotta say, it might have been Ghetto Mafia. For, Ghetto like, Mafia you know was first, saying? as far as like coming out of like you know the you Atlanta right about area. That too, you okay, know yeah. I, I did GA. Yeah. And, the and you being side. from the yeah. East Side, I know you yeah. gonna yeah. go yeah. ahead and take nah, over the East Side. For real, he's for real now. <laughs> yeah, for real, I stand corrected. For real. Because, you know, them boys used to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? And then from my side, we had the hard boys. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But they were more into the gangster shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They was in that gangster stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I gave them finesse. You know what I'm saying? I taught them how to hustle. Like, not necessarily like Jay-Z, but I spoke that language of the A. I was the first one to enunciate the slang the way that I did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And give them that sidewalk talk, that curve conversation. You know what I'm saying? That's what I gave to people. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you think it went over some people's heads? Because I remember when Concrete Law dropped, everybody was so excited because that Five Deuce Four Trade was so jamming. And I remember kind of getting into it with some of my partners at the time because we used to just we used to buy every Dungeon Family CD, period. Mm-hmm. And I remember a couple of them kind of being like, I don't know about this backbone, so this this, this yeah. shit kind of two street for me, bro. Like yeah. I ain't like I ain't in the dope game, bro. I don't yeah. I don't know about this one. Do you think yeah. like it kind of like went over some people's heads that was expecting a certain sound from the DF family tree, or do you think it just hit where it was supposed to hit? Like yeah, the industry spoke the same conversation. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They said the same thing in the source. There's no way this guy could be from the dungeon family, but everybody couldn't stand up on the soapbox and preach. Some of us had to get in the crowd and pass out literature. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to go amongst the people. You know what I'm saying? Like those guys could stand up there and say what they had to stay in the masses of like hypnotized. But guess what? Somebody had to pass out them Mahalia Jackson and Martin Luther King church fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was on the usher board. Right. That what concrete law was. I was the usher board. Yeah. You know Funeral advertising. So I had to go back. get the rest of the people. You know what I'm saying? Y'all who's already there knew what it was. But cats who weren't even dealing with that side of DF came to DF like, oh, okay, you should have it for us. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it was. I went amongst the people. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it was. For sure, for sure. Now, obviously, we we've heard the, I've heard this. You tell the story a couple times about Five Deuce Four Trey. But mm-hmm. how did that song come together? I mean, I had a homeboy in Dixie Hill. Rest in peace, Spanky D. He was big as two double wides. He couldn't shoot dice. He shoot shoot dice on all four. You know what I'm saying? Like hands and knee. He right. was so fat he couldn't just get up and keep throwing the dice. So he always be on the floor. So everybody standing around. Y'all know how dice games go. Yeah. yeah. He always say, "Five do four trail. Who betting? Who betting? You betting? Who betting? You betting? Five do four trail. I'm coming out right. Somebody better tell him. I'm coming out right. Throw the dice. He come out right. We break the house. Mm-hmm. He died though. Mm. Got shot. Mm. I did that song for him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like really, it was for him. I'm still bucking. That was the essence of it. But at the same time, Goody Mob had a gold record, and we couldn't even get him five five nine free. So mm. guess who was at the door bucking? Yeah. You know, still bucking. Like it was a whole attitude thing. But like I mentioned, you know, a few moments ago, I never knew that seven was the number of spiritual essence. 
I was being aligned. I didn't know George Greer, who played the stand-up bass on that song, was also in a f- band with my father. Hmm. My father killed this hell when I was 15. I ain't, I ain't know that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I knew that, but I'm saying I ain't know he was in no band with this guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? I needed a stand-up bass guy. Lo and behold, this guy knew my father. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that song really had definition to it, though. That's how Five Dudes came about, you know what I'm saying? From a homeboy Spanky D to just bucking, just being, for lack of a better word, a bully one in my day. I'm sorry, people. I'm just saying. That's what it was. But, yeah, that's where it came from. Man, that's an incredible story right there, man. Do you, when you when you look back on it, though, and especially you still live in Atlanta, so I'm sure people come up to you every day. Telling you that you're a legend, that you made classic records and all of that. What is your stance on that, though? Well, I was in um, the East Atlanta Village one night, and I saw a guy of the other persuasion. You know what I'm saying? Not a brother. Right. But my brother. Mm-hmm. Man, that man told me I was in his top three. And wow. guess who his top three was? Who? Jay-Z, Redman, and Backbone. I was like, Whoa. Are you serious, dude? You put me in the elite of those guys? You think that much of me? Wow. And he bought Hennessy all night. <laughs> <laughs> that joker would not stop sending me Hennessy. But what I'm saying is to be, you know, amongst the people and hear that. Because I'm not really what you call a legend because I still got work to do. Right now I can be appreciated as a classic. You know what I'm saying? Like the 79 Seville. They still make Cadillac. They ain't through excelling. Yeah. When they stop, it'll be legendary. Just like the Stingray. It's a legend because they don't make it no more. I still make music. You know what I'm saying? It may not be right. the animated type. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I still make music. I'm working on the jazz album. But, you know, we'll get into that. We'll talk about it. Okay. All right. Uh, before we got on, we was talking about you mentoring Mm-hmm. You know, artists of, of different generations and, and, and co-signing this Dungeon Family X movement, man. Talk a little bit about that. Well, Dungeon Family Generation X, uh, it's a conglomerate of, you know, MCs, songwriters, producers. We put a compilation out in 2012 called Global Warning. It's on Bandcamp. You can download it free. Uh, Dungeon Family Generation X Global Warning. You know, use your technology. You can find it. But everybody used to always inbox me. Like, when y'all going to do some of the Dungeon Family? I'm talking about people I don't even know. Yeah. That was because I used to talk to the people. Anybody talk to me, they say, you cooking grits? I say, yeah, with butter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whatever, I talk to the people. So all these people started inboxing me. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? Won't we create something then? I went to Reek, told Reek, I was like, yo, Reek, I think I need your leadership. You always got to ask Reek before you do anything concerning Dungeon Family. Got to. Why not? That's the done. I said, Reek, I need your blessing. I'm about to do Dungeon Family Generation X. We done it. You know what I'm saying? Like, includes brothers like Alien Craft. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not young MCs. They're mature MCs. You know what I'm saying? Nurtured and, and, and veteran, I should say. But that essence, they still were from them same veins. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Doski Woe, Bobby Whitfield, Chef T. Randall, Miss C.C. LaFleur, Renegade L. Ray. You know what I'm saying? Mama's Moonshine. You know what I'm saying? Um, Dukes of DeVille. You know what I'm saying? Like all of these people fell under that Dungeon Family Generation X umbrella. You know what I'm saying? And we created an album. You know what I'm saying? We put out this song called Beautiful Blue. I think you guys are going to run that next. But um, Beautiful Blue, man, that was the first single off that album. And and when the people hear it, they'll know. And, and matter of fact, ABL was spinning it for a minute. That and synopsis off the album. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we put that together in appreciation for the first generation. Not to taint or dis- discredit anything that we did as DF. I said, well, this is my offering. So everybody won't just think I'm a trap rapper. So mm-hmm. I do music. I 
solitary confinement. Solar botany, plants on consignment. Southern water flow, instrumental pirate. Was a roach among rats, now a tyrant. Shaking up the whole world, I'm vibrant. Shake the problems in my world, I'm smiling. Funky digging that computer, new hybrid. They took my brain and traveled galaxies to hide it. Absent minded, far gone, looking back to the future from the booth like where the time went. Sunshine in my thoughts, I combine it, bind it, then I change the climate, rhyming. Class, friends and family, nothing compares to it. Skip the polarities, let's have a good time. Enjoy the sunshine, yeah, these is real raps, no punchlines. We sip lemonade, granddaddy's recipe, a piece of pecan pie laying on the shade tree. Hold her hand, kiss her hugging on the front porch. All the kids running wild in the front yard. I'm digging the feeling, I'm feeling. Is you with me? Wait, bring it back, like. Quiet when I'm bumping the loud so I can concentrate properly. Don't like it in my orange juice. Jones will leave you walking in the rain, but I'ma come through. Yeah, my umbros, we're in the LALA. I'm chilling with the dungeon family in the cosmos. We hit the quasars and race cars. Bobby Whitfield control the outer space while they dance with the stars. I spring link with the comet, need a big away bar. Not a thing is in my stomach, huh? The abdomen, the abdomain. It's go, daddy. I don't know my name, cause I'm um, like fresh glue on my door. I'm feeling so brand new. Definitely. Now, you guys are also going to come out with a part two to that, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, I'm doing it in chapters. So this second chapter won't be the same faces. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It won't be the same faces because talent evolves. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? So this time around, you'll get brothers like Monster Luther King, Sir Calloway, Hobo Inc., Tommy Nova. You know what I'm saying? Methuselah. You know what I'm saying? Like... We got them type of brothers coming on as special forces. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it is, special forces. The first one was global warning, letting people know we're here. We come in peace. We're here. We're here. Real Atlanta hip hop is here. You know what I'm saying? It did pretty good. I had it on iTunes for a minute, but I pulled it down because everybody couldn't eat off of it. Okay. And I didn't want to be the only guy getting the money. You know what I'm saying? So. Him. So if it blow up, everybody eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Like, like t- tell us about um, like your 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 school experience too, mm-hmm. man. Because I mean, a lot of folks don't know that. I mean, like, I mean, you you never stopped learning. One, but I also know that you know, even as your career was rising, there were times where like the school kind of got in the way at times. Like, so, like tell us like like what what's because you went to like, what, Alabama State or was it Alabama A and M A and M? Yeah, A and M, man. That's why I'm not on watch for the hook. 
only first generation member that I ain't on watch for the hook, but I got a verse, mm-hmm. an unreleased verse. And it's going to be even more valuable after the one music fest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so once I drop it, you know what I'm saying, you'll see what it is. But, yeah, I was away in school when I did, um, when, when they did um, Watch for the Hook. That's why I'm not on it. So, you know, I, I missed it. But, you know, 2016, I'm at Life University right now studying dietetics and nutrition. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still in school. Mm-hmm. But I ain't going to miss one music fest. Yeah, yeah we, we definitely going to talk about One Music Fest. Oh, okay. Um, the dietetics thing, man, mm-hmm. like, obviously I had heard that, you know, your one of your elders had mm-hmm. diabetes, and then mm-hmm. at one point you were diagnosed with diabetes, mm-hmm. and that's what pushed you towards looking at your diet and looking at really the generational diets that we have as black people a mm-hmm. lot of times. Mm-hmm. Man, what in, in, in this journey – what have you learned that you can put the rest of us up on game for as far as how we should be eating and avoiding some of these diseases that are prevalent in our communities? Well, it definitely starts with the diet. Nothing is hereditary. Don't ever let them tell you that this disease is hereditary. The way that we eat is generational. Hmm. That's what's hereditary. You know what I'm saying? Like I was in the same hospital. My grandmother had just passed away in four months ago. And they telling me I got the same condition. I was like, no way. You're not going to take two of us in this hospital. You know what I mean? They were sending the little old ladies in. Now, this is how you do the insulin. I kept saying, lady, listen, I'm from Kerry I ain't, I ain't going to be sticking myself with no needle, needles. That's too much like jacket shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna do that. So I kept laying there. Kept laying there. I was listening to that NAR CD which was a good transition CD because he had just come out of what he was going through, you know, with his family. You know what I'm saying? Which, which album? Life is Good? The one with uh, when he sent with the girl wedding dress. That yeah, Life, Life is, is Good. good. Life yeah, is good. Yeah. That was a damn good album, yeah, too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just laid there for 10 days listening to that album and, and researching ways to heal myself. I don't know what it was about that album. Maybe I was caught up in the fact that it had just dropped before I went in the hospital. But I don't know, but that album brought me through that time and made me find Dr. I can't pronounce his first name, but his last name is definitely Opari. Okay. And he suggested that I do a vegan regimen and detox my body. And at that time, I had never heard of Dr. Sabi. You know mm. what I'm saying? Rest in so, peace. Exactly, man. Heaven's life. Um, um Dr. Opari, he's an integrative doctor, so he means he used mainstream and traditional medicine. You know what I'm saying? But he's more so in the traditional side of things, the naturopathic side. And he just, through his consultation, gave me enough knowledge to know how to go out and heal myself. You know what I'm saying? He told me what I needed to do to repel my liver. He told me what, did I, what I needed to do to repel my lungs, but it wasn't just him. I I was meeting a lot of powerful people, which I still do to this day, so I know my calling is even greater. But don't get me to soapboxing, but what I'm saying is, I met another sister online, you know what I'm saying? She's a grand elder, you know what I'm saying? And she told me, before you can heal anything in your life, anything, you have to be surrounded with peace. Before you even try to heal anything, you got to be peaceful so your body can calm down and fight off negativity. Then put the right stuff in it so it can magnify that. You know what I'm saying? So from her to Dr. Opari, you know what I'm saying, then my own research, you know what I'm saying, that led me to go to school so I can kind of help other people because I want to help find a way to cure Parkinson's disease through diet. Because all it is is a nerve situation. I dated a young lady whose son was diagnosed with ADHD. You know what I'm saying? That can be reversed through a vegan diet. Now, I'm not always vegan because I'll be at JR Crickets (laughs) in a minute. But I did beat diabetes, you know what I'm saying, by going vegan for 90 days straight. Yeah. And man, and a lot of people gonna see you on stage and be like, "That's backbone." Oh yeah, because they remember <laughs> you from the videos. Is that how you lost a lot of the weight and got yeah. in better shape? Actually, to be honest, I was uh, dating a young lady that drove me crazy, and I used to be walking through her neighborhood all night to my baby, 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 baby. Just listen, baby. 
Baby, listen, baby. Listen, she wants to. And then I was saying, but thank you, girl. You knocked off about 40 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Man. <laughs> but no, but like that, that vegan thing is like, I'm like, I'm not all the way vegan. Like, I gave right. up, like, you know, beef, chicken, pork. The only thing I eat now is, like, is seafood. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I, I'm here to say, man, like, I mean, it, it works, man. I, and I was yeah. inspired by, you know, another guest that we had on the show, you know, a while back, you know, from Stick Man's book. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To eat plants, lift eat, iron. Yes, sir. I got that You know that what I'm saying? It's like, that book, like, completely changed my life yeah. and how I approach things. Like, mm-hmm. and it was like, wow, man, this, this dietary thing is really serious. You know what I'm saying? It is. It is, bro. Like, I didn't even understand because what we eat had emotions. Yeah. Chicken, yeah. chicken crazy. You know what I'm saying? Cow, cows looking at their death. You don't know what he was thinking about before he got killed. And yeah. then we eat that emotion. Like, I mean, I still eat it, but I'm fighting it. I was, I was, I still eat it because I was raised on it mm-hmm. and I'm addicted to it. So I threw a party a couple of years ago and I hired this vegan chef, but I wanted him to make some chicken egg rolls. Mm-hmm. He was like, I don't even know how to cook that. I was like, how do you know how to cook chicken? He was like, I'm third generation vegan. Mm. So what you do when you want a hamburger? He said, I ain't never even tasted a hamburger, so I don't fiend for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's our behavior. Our psyche. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We're creatures of habit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. Like if you were taught to eat this and you don't know what a salad is or you don't know what this is, you're not going to eat it because it wasn't given to you. But the laws of nature should eat green leaves for, vi- for, for vitality and fruit for pleasure. That's yeah. what it is. And nothing but water. Right. Now, and, and, I, and I didn't even get on my own little soapbox either, man. But I read a book. It was called The Higher Taste. Okay. And they had some, a lot of stuff in there talking about just how, you know, for the most part, really, really, they were, they, were, they were pretty much blatant about it. They used some extreme literature, I mean, some extreme language at times, but they were pretty much saying, like, hey, look, man, humans ain't supposed to eat meat because they our teeth ain't built to tear in the flesh oh, like tigers right. and lions right. and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we're built to chew on vegetation you know right. what i'm saying but it, but like you know so not to get too far into that but it seems like there is a movement in hip-hop that's getting more healthier like we got oh yeah gucci man out here off yeah. the drink yeah. we got ross out here losing yeah. weight slim thug slim yeah. thug yeah. then like i heard back slim then well, um, i heard <laughs> yeah. big sean rapping about going vegan on this Khaled album you know big it's, sean it's, can't afford to lose no more <laughs> weight man big sean will be disappeared he i am not it. here for the record i didn't say anything <laughs> about another rapper you know what i'm saying <laughs> But nah, seriously though, like on on some real shit though, they they just endorsed the uh, health and wellness as the tenth element of hip hop. Stick man, mm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, they got a CD out right now called Ready to Live. Yeah, mm. you, you heard about yeah, that? I heard about that. Yeah, and it's it's the tenth element of hip hop. Like it's really a movement. You know what I'm saying? Like Chef Zoo. You know what I'm saying? Zulu, Methuselah, my brother. You know what I'm saying? He 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 got me on to that. You know what I'm saying? Like. They got a little tour going around the, the country, you know what I'm saying, that they're doing. But it's definitely taking back over. We're definitely waking up to new things, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't a false flag. Now, Wanda Dashiki now may have come stylistic, but you know what I'm saying? After that passes, though, those that remain in them Dashikis were the ones that was awakened, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So yeah. That's the thing. You're right about that. We was uh, going back earlier talking about some of the songs you were on and not on. I Mm -hmm. heard uh, before that the reason that you're on Trans DF Express is because L.A. Reid pretty much pushed you, pushed for you to get on that song. Is that true? Yes, sir. I don't know where you got your research. (laughs) Boy, I ain't had to send your nail bow. You got me talking like I'm from the corner of Cascade. No. <laughs> boy, you know your history, Jack. I don't know where you got it from, but boy, you A1. But definitely, man, L.A. called Rico. I'm like, yo, wait a minute. My boy not on this song. I wasn't even signed to L.A. I was signed to Universal. Mm. L.A. wanted to sign me at that time. But me being as flamboyant and arrogant as I was, I wanted to have my own situation. Mm. Not knowing I was sitting on a pot of gold, but at the same time, I always wanted to establish my own entity, which I did. My empire has just taken a little longer to manifest itself, but it's definitely manifesting itself. It may not be as one of the elite known rappers, mm-hmm. but musically, you will definitely know about Backbone. But yeah, LA pushed for that, man. I do appreciate it because it's one of our biggest, well, the second biggest song as far as a crew song. Yeah. 
Because obviously Watch for the Hook was the biggest, you know what I'm saying? But right. Cruise Song Train DF was one of the next biggest, you know what I'm saying? So we talking about all this DF stuff. I've heard you say this before. I believe, I don't remember if it was Rico or Ray said mm-hmm. something when they were on here, basically about how, you know, DF never really broke up. Everybody went on to establish their own kingdoms as kings should do. Ooh, boy, and, you sound like you quoting back well, on and, 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 and you and I recall you saying that, you know, and there will be a time when everybody comes back together to make everything even more powerful. Do you think that that one music fest is is one of those times that everybody's coming back together to show just how powerful that y'all are? That is definitely the pin- pinnacle at the moment. That is definitely the pinnacle. You understand what I'm saying? Like, not to take credit for anything, but when I put that Generation X album together, I gave the essence of togetherness with that album. Mm. And from there, it's only been going back up. You see what I'm saying? Like, I ain't taking credit for none of that. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Because I believed in this brand. That was the reason I was the first brother on social media. I had the crew. Way yeah. back to MySpace day. Because I like talking to the people. That's what I'm saying. Like the, the, the coming together of this one music fest is something so phenomenal. Like my whole family going to be there. You know what I'm saying? Even my ex-girlfriend who was with me when it first started, I got to get her in there because <laughs> she was there. She was sleeping in the trunk. I mean, not the trunk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. The back seat. Yeah. <laughs> she was sleeping in the back seat while I was in Doppler. Yeah. I was in Patchwork. Yeah. While I was at Boss Town before it became Stank On It. She used to be in the back seat and had to be to work in the morning. And we had but one car. And I had to be at that studio. She was like, don't worry about it. Go on in there. Leave the key. She'd be right there in that back seat. Sleep, bro. Stay down. That's why she got to be there. You know what I'm saying? But this one music fest is something powerful, man. Like, when I ain't doing my song, I'm going to step off the stage and go back and look at it. Because I'm a fan of it. Yeah, and I, I peeped something that you said on social media not too long ago. I think you was at the Art of Rap show at, at mm-hmm. Lakewood. Okay. I was seeing, like, somebody in the comments like, man, why ain't you backstage with Ice-T and them, man? Like, why, why are you in the crowd? And Batman was like, bro, like, I like seeing the show, like yeah. everybody else. Like, and I'm yeah. kind of the same way, man. Yeah. Like, you know, for, yeah. backstage is cool when it's like you actually know your friend that's yeah. up there yeah. rapping. Right. But even most of those times, I'm like, I'm, I'm about to go back, go right. back in the crowd, get me a drink, look at the show. Because I don't like watching the back of people's head. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right. 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 I want to get in the emotion. I want to see how the people feel, like how I felt like when Ice-T dropped six in the morning, police at my door. Yeah. Good God almighty. I used to play that song all day, every day, man. I'm from Atlanta. That man, I'm clean from California. And I used to play that song every day. You know what I'm saying? Before I went to school because it was so significant to me. You know what I'm saying? When EPMD hit the stage, you know what I'm saying? Mob D hit the stage. Curtis Blow announced his 44th year in hip hop. And he considered himself an old school rapper. Wait a minute, Curtis Blow. I'm 44 years old and I'm an old school rapper. So mm-hmm. I take my hat off to you, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For you to be doing hip hop 44 years. And I'm an old school rapper now, and I'm 44 years old. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's, that's, that was phenomenal. I had to be in the crowd to see that. I didn't want to stand on the stage and be like, you're on backbone, son. <laughs> that's good. I did that at the gas station with Mr. Cheeks. You know I was like, Cheeks, what's that? And he was like, who the fuck are you? I said, I'm backbone. Oh, shit, son. <laughs> he New York the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, when, you, when a New York nigga New York you... You know you fire. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, nigga, oh shit, son, you. You know what I'm saying? You fire, y'all. I couldn't believe it. I was like, yo, Cheeks, yeah, it's back, boy. He was like, nah, nigga, that ain't you. I was like, yeah, I dropped down a little bit. But this is me because we was, had the same A&R at University. Yeah. So ah, okay. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was their manager, but he was my A&R at uh, Universal. So, yeah. That's history right yeah, there, man. man. So I, I'm sitting on. We can do this all night. Too. Obviously, you you know very excited, man. And I didn't hear some some things that's gonna take place, and that got me even more excited about it. But like, as a fan mm-hmm. and also as a member, mm-hmm. what does this coming together in Atlanta at that mean to you? Man, we was in the studio the other night, man. Me, Big Boy, Killer Mike, Sleepy Brown, Ray Murray. I'm sitting there like, 
Yo, man, kill him. Please do that action, man. Please do bump, 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 bump. Yeah, all oh, that, yo, drunk. Yeah. Boy, that shit will tie A up. Tie the A up that night. I mean, still might do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I'm saying as a fan. I wasn't speaking as a, yo, on backbone. Can you please do this song here, here, here? No. I'm saying when I come off the stage after my verb go off, and I run to the the, the grass. <laughs> I'm going to the grass where Cat Cade at. <laughs> Cat Cade bought lawn ticket. We don't want to sit down, Jack. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They up in the grass. So I'm going up there and watch this thing, man. And watch it. Because I want to see what the people do. This has never been done. This is what's so monumental. You know what I'm saying? I know everybody got their reunion tours. You know what I'm saying? And they get back together albums and all that. But what's about to happen that day, man, has never, ever happened. For us to perform together for the first time and probably the last time is going to be so phenomenal. That hour and 30 minutes, man, y'all better get your ticket, Jack. Yeah, because like, I think the closest, yeah, yeah, I, and I, I can stand correct, but I think the closest I've ever seen a whole DF show was hell B you might have been there too we didn't know each other back then but the 1998 homecoming at Morris Brown when oh, it was, yeah, was outcast and Goody and Goody That's it. it had everybody on stage and Rico's waving the flag and I was like oh yeah, we man. were there yeah. but they were outcast and Goody right right. it right. wasn't with Dr. Backbone Cool Breed Big Rule Sleepy Brown you know what I'm saying right that was that was that that was that six man machine you know what I'm saying? That's why people always say, you know, Dungeon Family, Outcast and Goody Mob. Well, it's deeper than six. And I'm yeah. writing that book, Deeper Than Six. Not to throw shade at my brothers, mm-hmm. but just to tell my story. I deserve that. It's deeper yeah. than six. You know what I'm saying? So the two questions. I, I have a question. I'm probably one of the only few people that's going to want to know this. And then a question that everybody want to know as far as One Music Fest. Mm-hmm. Is Dre going to be there performing? See what happened was uh, <laughs> Cousin Josephine She came up from Griffin With a sack of shuck pee And then She uh, churned a little butter And uh, she milked the cow The chicken laid an egg And That's the end of that story <laughs> I don't even know how to decipher that one. <laughs> oh. oh okay my fault I don't know bro We've been sworn to secrecy. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And I want to know this because I was looking for him at the at the at last shows. Mm-hmm. Is Cool Breeze going to be there? Now, I talk to Breeze every day. That's where that's at. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> all I'm saying. Whoever name you see on the flight, guaranteed to be there, Jack. Because like, like, crowd is kept. Like, folks always be sweating. People are like, is Dre going to be there? Dre be there? But like, on the low, like, Cool Breeze be, be, be MIA too sometimes. Too. Like, yeah. damn, man, I cool really Breeze, wanted to see this song perform. Cool Breeze <laughs> got one of the best albums that yeah. came out in that time. Yeah. East Point's greatest hit is a classic it album. Period. Yes, sir, man. And like, and not one cuss word on it. Right. right. <laughs> Creatine. Watch for the hook. The joint with we did it before. We do it again. We did, yeah. man. And and the one with the Calhoun. There's some rules on the street. <laughs> hey, go. Back. You gonna make me play that when Ooh, I get in the car, boy? Nah, you gotta play it next. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta play that now. You know what I'm talking about? Snail Calhoun. What's that? The Lucky Calhoun. Hey, Polly we Calhoun. We can't leave out hit, man. Oh we yeah, yeah. Oh hit, yeah. Man. Yeah, man. Me <laughs> cool hit, reason man. with doctors. You know what I'm saying? But to be honest, I ain't, I ain't like that verse. Yeah, oh, you I didn't got, like it. Nah, I got rushed. I was rushed because we was on tour. Convertible top. So I ain't I laid said, in yeah, the pocket. The rocks. Right. I ain't laid in the pocket the way I wanted to do because the tour bus was outside and we was about to go on the Stank Love tour. Okay. No, 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 no. Quimini tour, and uh, I had to go in and do it real quick. You know what I'm saying? Brief like, yo, I need you on the record, son. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, all us talk like we from New York, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, all right, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? But no, no, no. It's definitely a classic. Definitely a classic. But when we perform next song together, hint, hint, hint. hint, hint <laughs> For sure. I will be doing it a cappella so I can get my point across. You know what I'm saying? Got you. the back door. It's Front Street Shoulder with Mr. Freddie Calhoun, the hustler, bringing pain, pain to these suckers. suckers off the top of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to get to them right. You know what I'm saying? For sure, most definitely, yeah. man. I gotta say this, and I need to go. 
over there. What's the name of Maya and them store over there? The new store they got the next drip, to the Dripping Star. Yes, man, sir. I need to go over there and buy one of them five dudes full tray t shirts, man. That dude, I saw it on your Instagram, mm-hmm. man. I saw it on their Instagram. Okay. And I had to say, man, them shirts is hard. That yeah, that's man. a shirt that a whole lot of people need to be wearing come oh. September tenth. I'm telling you, bro, they got there. My family. Boy, all of them got them on. <laughs> I'm talking about, I got some country cousins, bro. <laughs> and them jokers going to show up. Boy, they already they don't bought 10 tickets. They got a whole row. They ready. That's them strolls what I'm are ready, about. Jack. You know what I'm talking about? My mama, though. My mama said, I don't care what you do. But, boy, if you don't do that, get rich of this verse. I'm oh, yeah. so pissed off. You know what I'm saying? That's the only verse you want to see. She don't care about it. Five <laughs> she don't care about my own song. <laughs> She want to hear that. Get rich to it, boy. That's what she want to hear, Jack. She want to hear that one, Jack. Most definitely, man. Yo, we got to thank you, man, for coming in, for real. I appreciate real. the opportunity to come in and have fun, man. We've been talking about it for a while, so I'm glad we can finally make it happen, man. And please tell people, especially because he'll talk back to you. So tell him about all your social media uh, handles. Well, I'll do one better, man. You can call me, 404-692-2096. I am a uh, coaching psychology major and a dietetics major. I can't give you too much on the nutrition side because I ain't certified to do that yet. I know a little something. I can point you in the right direction. But psychologically, I can talk you through anything. You know what I'm talking about? I can talk with you through anything, I should say. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to tell you what I think you should do. You're going to tell yourself. You know what I'm saying? But call me, 404-692-2096. And I'm talking about that's anything. You run out of gas on 20, hit me, Jack. I'm in the West End, <laughs> bro. Old Fat Tony House every day. You feel me? No, I'm just tripping for real. That's here. Call me, though. And then on Instagram, backbone underscore DF. And Twitter, backbone underscore DF1G. I don't even deal with Facebook. Anything you can get signed on to and you can never delete it on. Mm. Mm. When I found that out, boy, I let that thing post nothing <laughs> on Facebook. See, I know y'all already got me. Y'all already got me. Y'all got me. You got me. It's cool. I ain't even say nothing else over there. And Snapchat with that face recognition. Yeah. Better be careful. Oh, yeah. yeah, You know what I'm saying? They Uh, capture you good. As soon as you put your face on there, oh, they got you, Jack. I ain't logged on to uh, Snapchat since I heard about that. uh, Y'all do Instagram. They get you on anything. You know what I'm saying? But I got to promote. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely, man. We appreciate you coming through, man. Much love on everything you're doing. You always got our support over here. We almost made it through. We almost made it through without a fall going off. But uh, we appreciate you, man, 100%. Can't wait till One Music Fest. Make sure y'all get your, your tickets. And um, also, let me let me pull up the, the calendar real quick. August 31st, we will be doing a One Music Fest version of Hip Hop Trivia at Slice on P.E. So make okay. sure you come through. You don't know. Who gonna be in that thing? So make sure you slide through, I'll be and we'll be giving away tickets as well. So you know, make sure y'all come out and support, and make sure you fall up, fall through on every Wednesday leading up to it too, man. Oh yeah, Wednesday for sure. Slice hip hop trivia, man. Most definitely. Hey, look on some real shit. I ain't even want to show up on one hit one tonight because I felt like they were gonna shoot at me. That no, 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 <laughs> no. I got three number one though, Jack. Hilarious. Five was number one in the southeastern region for two or three weeks. <laughs> And get rich of it with number one in the, in the nation for about three weeks and uh, two weeks. I'm sorry, and Tran DF Express touched it for about three, four days. So. That, that's why we called it that that night. Oh, okay. Number one hit one. Yeah, so we have people with a bunch of hit number song. one hits yeah. and <laughs> one hit one. I wanted to come that night. I said, Nah, I'm from Crack K. I don't want to hear that shit, man. They gonna be like, they gonna miss a five new four tree. I hate when people say that. What about the other fifty songs that are wrapped on with the Dungeon Family? You know what I'm saying? So hilarious. About, you know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, yo, man. It's all good. I'm just having fun, man. For sure. For sure, man. We appreciate y'all listening. We appreciate y'all supporting, man. Make sure you follow us on Day One Radio on all your social media handles. That's D A Y, the number one radio. And we'll see you next week with another dope show. Indeed. Black Men United. <laughs>